You're looking at the nuclear-powered USS Gerald Ford, as she performs high-speed turns during sea trials. These trials were conducted after she was delivered to the Navy from the Huntington Ingalls shipyard in Newport News, Virginia. At 100,000 tons of displacement, these high-speed turns are a sight to behold. The crew pushes its propulsion system to the limit, putting maximum stress on its steel superstructure. Almost all of the Navy's ships come from just two primary builders, Bath Ironworks in Maine, and the Newport News Shipyard in Virginia, seen here. Here, workers test the electromagnetic catapult system on the future USS Kennedy before delivering the carrier to the Navy. A dead load will be hurled off the flight deck at 150 miles per hour. How did a nation that once had dozens of active shipyards end up with only two? It's a story of capitalism, labor, and politics. The United States Navy is facing a crisis. A crisis not of firepower, but of shipbuilding. While China rapidly expands its fleet at an unprecedented rate, America's ability to replace aging warships has slowed to a crawl. Why is the world's most powerful navy struggling to build ships? During World War II, the United States had a massive shipbuilding industry, capable of churning out warships at a staggering pace. But today? The industrial base has shrunk. Shipyard closures, workforce shortages, and supply chain bottlenecks have turned shipbuilding into a slow and expensive process. In the 1980s, we had over 20 major shipyards. Today the Navy's two remaining primary shipyards are struggling to find skilled workers. Experienced veterans are retiring, and there aren't enough young workers to replace them. The supply chain has become fragile, with key components delayed for months, sometimes years. But the problem isn't just industrial. It's also political. U.S. Navy shipbuilding must be approved by Congress. The process has many natural friction points, including budget fights, disagreements over strategy, and ever-changing priorities. Specifications are often technically overambitious. The result? Endless cost overruns, and ships that take far too long to build. The now discontinued Zumwalt-class destroyer, once thought to revolutionize naval warfare, was a poster child for this method of procurement. Years of delays and billions of dollars in cost overruns ensued. Only three were ever built. Right now, the US Navy has around 287 active ships. The Navy is planning for 300 by 2032 and aiming for over 380 by 2042. But here's the problem, that's really all just a wish list. We're not building fast enough to meet those targets. It's unclear whether all of these plans will get funding. And the delays are piling up. Take the Virginia-class submarines which are behind schedule by about 50%. Blame supply chain backlogs and worker shortages. America's shipyards are bleeding skilled workers faster than they can be replaced. Without more workers, and serious changes in how we build ships, the gap between the US and China's navy will only grow wider. China by contrast, keeps its methods of production simple. They produce ships that are what you might call, good enough. While the US chases perfection, ordering only the most advanced and expensive version when a simpler design might get the job done. So right now you're asking, what can be done about any of this? First, revive the industrial base. The U.S. must train a new generation of skilled shipbuilders. Welders, engineers, pipefitters, these are the people who build the Navy's future. Without them, no ship ever leaves port. A day at the shipyard starts before dawn. These workers practice highly specialized skills often learned by apprenticeship. But the fact is, not enough younger Americans aim to enter this kind of workforce today. These workers are also under the pressure of Wall Street's demand for profits. Defense contractors are among the most widely followed stocks on Wall Street. The demand from investors for short-term profits may have driven too much decision-making at these companies. 
This has led to a generation of C-suite management that never worked as engineers, and have lost touch with the engineering ethos needed to solve tough problems. Managing for the bottom line may not always be the best way to get the country all that it needs. Next, reduce red tape. Decisions that should take months drag on for years. But perhaps the biggest change? Prioritizing efficiency over perfection. The Navy must embrace modular and scalable designs, ones that can be built quickly, upgraded easily, and deployed faster. Partnering with nations like Japan, South Korea, and Australia could dramatically expand production capacity. These issues may be difficult but they are solvable. Ship christenings are a tradition and a happy occasion for all who worked so hard to bring these vessels into service. While more such ceremonies are sure to come, the question is, how do we plan today to provide for needs that are still many years away? If you'd like more short videos like this one, be sure to hit the thumbs up button to let us know. And subscribe to our channel so you'll know when new episodes drop. Thanks for watching.